Before I had a patch bay, I was constantly disconnecting and reconnecting cables from the inputs and outputs of my gear, but now I can leave everything connected to the patch bay and simply use a patch cable to make custom connections as needed. This saves me a ton of setup time, prevents patching mistakes that could cost even more time, and it protects my gear and cables from constant wear and tear. On the back of this quarter inch TRS patch bay, you'll find 24 input jacks on the top row and 24 output jacks on the bottom. Those 48 jacks on the back correspond to the 48 jacks on the front of the patch bay. So you can keep all of your gear plugged into these jacks on the rear and set up custom signal flows by connecting the front jacks together with patch cables. When setting up your patch bay, it's important to think about the general signal flow of your studio. That way you can lay out your patch bay so that the basic functions of your studio will be set up by default with no need for patch cables. This is possible thanks to a feature built into most audio patch bays called normaling. Think of each vertical pair of jacks on the patch bay as a module. There are three general modes, and the mode you choose will determine how that module will function. The first and most basic mode is through mode. This means that the top jack on the rear will simply flow to the top jack on the front, and the bottom jack on the front will simply flow to the bottom row on the back. In this mode, the top and bottom jacks work independently. The second mode is called half normal. In half normal mode, the jacks on the back still correspond to the jacks on the front, just like in through mode, but the signal from the top jack will automatically flow down to the bottom jack by default when no patch cable is connected. In half normal mode, this default connection is broken when you connect something to the bottom jack on the front panel. The third mode is called full normal. In full normal mode, the default connection from the top to bottom will be broken when a cable is connected to either the top or the bottom jack on the front panel. So connecting a patch cable to the output or input jack will break the default connection. There are lots of ways to use each of these modes and the possibilities are honestly endless, but here are a few examples of how I set up my patch bay to meet the needs of the various devices in my studio. The top left corner of my patch bay is where my microphones come in. Some of my microphones, like this boom mic, are directly wired to the top row of jacks on the back of my patch bay. Alternatively, I could have an XLR panel in another room, that way I could connect a microphone to that XLR panel, which would then be available on the top row of my patch bay. I will almost always want my microphones to connect to the microphone preamps on my audio interface, so I've set up these jacks in full normal mode. This means that the mics will be connected to my interface by default without any patching, but if I want to patch my microphone to a different microphone preamp, I can simply do so with a patch cable. I chose to use full normal instead of half normal because I don't want to accidentally connect my microphone to two preamps that are both supplying phantom power. When I connect a patch cable to the top jack to re-patch that microphone somewhere else, it automatically breaks the connection to my interface. This also prevents me from connecting two microphones to the same audio interface preamp. Most of the other essential connections for my typical workflow are set up using half normal mode. For example, my audio interface outputs flow directly to the inputs of my monitors. If I wanted to patch my turntable directly into the monitors for a pure analog connection, I can patch my phono output jacks to the monitor input jacks and bypass the other components of the system. Given that this is set up in half normal mode, the default connection from the interface outputs to the monitor inputs will be broken when I connect something else to the monitor input jacks. Half normal jacks also provide a way to split a signal. Let's say I want to send my interface output to the input of my monitors while also sending that same output to a pair of headphones. I just patch the output of my interface to the input of my headphone amplifier and the signal flows down to the speakers because nothing is connected to the bottom jack. Remember, in half normal mode, the connection is only broken when there's a plug in the bottom jack. So now that signal is going to both the monitors and the headphone amplifier. I use through mode for my outboard effects and my preamps because I don't want the outputs of my compressor and my outboard preamps to feed their own inputs and create a feedback loop. Setting these modules to through mode keeps the top jack and the bottom jack independent from one another, 
meaning that I need to manually patch these devices anytime I want to use them. You'll notice that I have two 48-point quarter-inch TRS patch bays here. One is a Neutrik, which costs about 100 bucks, and the other is a Samson S-Patch, which is a little bit more expensive. I've had some time to compare these two options, and I think the Samson is well worth the extra money. If I want to change the mode on any module of the Samson patch bay, I just need to toggle the switch between the top and bottom jack. In order to switch the mode on the Neutrik modules, I need to disconnect the jacks from the front and back, remove the front panel of the entire patch bay, take the module out, flip it around, and reassemble everything. This has already caused me several headaches as I've continued to add components and shift things around on the patch bays, so I would definitely recommend going with the Samson patch bay if you're on the fence. You should also consider how much space you have and how many connections you'll need. These two 48-port patch bays take up one RU of rack space each, which can really add up. If you've got a larger collection of components or less rack space to work with, you may want to look into a TT or tiny telephone connector patch bay instead. These are much more space efficient as the density of the connection points is much greater with these smaller connectors. You'll also find patch bays that have multi-channel connectors in the rear rather than the same connection type on the front and back. This can make for a much cleaner setup utilizing multi-channel fanouts rather than individual cables on the rear panel for each connection. I'll leave you some links to some of the best patch bay options in the description below this video. Buying through those links will support Audio University at no extra cost to you. Thanks for watching.